Good morning. It is a new day, and I hope that is a good one for you. I'm recording this on Monday, but you're watching this later on in the week, so um, that's okay. Uh, I said on um, yesterday when I was recording this that I had a short devotion for you, just an idea um, about the hyrax or the coney. We see them in scripture. Um, very cool. Proverbs 30 says, There are four things which are little upon the earth, but exceedingly wise. The conies are the second one. The conies are a feeble folk. Or they're, they're kind of weak. Um, yet they make their houses in rocks. Um, and it talks about the ants, how they prepare the meat in summer. Locusts, they have no king, but they're organized. Uh, spiders um, take a hold of their hands or in the king's palaces. Um, it's just an encouragement to us, not only to see the amazement that God has in nature, but also to use everything that we have uh, for God's glory. Um, even if it's something that's small. And uh, give me just a second, I have a Skype call. Okay, we are moving on from the animal recognition to the mammalian orders part three. The most important which of is carnivora or a carnivore or flesh eating. And that example is a seal, a lion, and a bear. Uh, there, we also go into odd and even toed animals like the horse, rhino, giraffe, hippo. We go into them on the next slide. And we talk about hooves being enlarged, thickened toenails. They're generally known as ungulates, hooved animals. Horses are one of those animals that I find pretty amazing. It's placed in a family known as equine or equine, um, depending on how you pronounce it. An equestrian is someone who rides a horse. Equestrianism. Equestrianism? Equestrianism, that's it. I'm not a horse person, but equestrianism is the sport of riding horses. Why would evolution develop something that is so meant to be used and ridden by mankind? That's something that I've wondered. I think that horses are a special evidence of God's creative care for humankind because they are perfectly designed to be ridden around. We don't really see that being a major point of interest in the animal kingdom to be, um, to have an animal be used and have its purpose to be used. Um, kind of strange. So, that's just one evidence against evolution, in my opinion. Some even-toed animals are called rudiments because they chew their cud, processing it through an extra stomach. And we know how the cud works. Um, at least many of us know about cows and how they have different compartments and chambers in their stomach that process food over time. So you should be remotely familiar. Bovines or bovines um, are a member of this arteriodactyl and are used as sources of food and clothing. Cows and buffalo are particularly popular bovines. Many subspecies and species can interbreed. Now this is a um, really interesting point. Species are somewhat closely related to each other especially those within the same family and genus. For instance, the house cat is closely enough related to the African wild cat that they can have kids, but their offspring will be infertile, and they're totally wild. They're untamable. They're unlike either the wild cat or the house cat. Um, you wouldn't want to live with one. They're just ferocious. And uh, we can look at Google here. I always like doing this, and um, we can type in um, 
lion and tiger mix, right? And you get the, the liger, right? A hybrid offspring from a male lion and a female tiger. I have to uh, take this Skype call real quick. And with these hybrid animals, there's a lot more where that came from. 18 hybrid animals that are hard to believe are real. It's pretty amazing. Um, the Liger, the uh, Tigon, <laughs> um, oop, sorry, uh, the Zonkey, a zebra and donkey, um, a Jaglion, a Jeep, goat and a sheep, um, Roller Bear, Polar Bear and Brown Bear, uh, Koi Wolf, Zebroid. Uh, some of these are pretty. Um, some of these are pretty amazing. The Wolfen, that's, that's pretty crazy. The Beefalo, uh, Buffalo and Cow, also called Catalo, been around since the 1800s. Um, <laughs> this is strange looking uh, animals. But anyways, um, the... Uh, hybrid animals here, they are evidence, or evidences of, in my opinion, um, creation. Because God created kinds. And these kinds are closely related to each other because they um, became different species after the flood as they spread out, went to different territories, etc. You know... Many people say that because these families and genuses can uh, interbreed, that it proves evolution, but that's just not the case. We don't, we don't necessarily disagree with the fact that microevolution can occur, that things do change, because things do change, but they do not change like evolution has said they will change. But, anyways... That's just my sh short tirade. Um, animal recognition, part 11, you got the weasel. Looks like a ferocious fellow. You have the seal, uh, a large fish eater, aquatic carnivore. And the last idea, endangered and extinct species. When animals and plants are in danger of, ex or in danger of extinction, they're known as endangered. Is saving a species a worthy goal? And you have to think about that for yourself. I think yes. I think that species, every species, plays a pretty important part in its ecosystem. And saving it is a goal that we should have. It's not like we should try to decimate each species. Um, but it is estimated, evolutionists actually say, that 99% of all species have been extinct, have become extinct. And I think that a lot of species went extinct during the flood. For instance, we talked about, I believe, at some point earlier this year when we were talking about plants, we were talking about cycads and ginkgo trees. We had tons of different varieties of those species, but they all went extinct. Well, why? Probably because of, in my opinion, the universal flood. But... If we have something like the northern white rhino it's progressively going extinct, now extinct because the last of their species, I believe, have died or are on their deathbed, is saving them a worthy goal? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't think we should decimate a population like the dodo bird. And anyways, many large animals have become extinct. Consider the saber-toothed cat. Um, this guy here, um, which is called the Indorictherium. I'm not good on my dinosaur names. And the woolly mammoth. Why would they become extinct if they were the biggest and strongest members of their species? Well, many evolutionists say that they could not adapt to a changing earth, and I think they are right. Except the changing earth 
was because of the flood. You see, after the flood, there was a massive loss of oxygen. There was global cooling like there never was before. There was, um, there was this bottleneck of different species. So Noah only took two of each one on the ark, and if they were a clean animal, he took seven. But anyways, there was a massive bottleneck in the genetic code, and these animals just simply couldn't survive, even though they were massive and strong. And so it's not always necessarily the biggest and the strongest that survive, as we consider many large um, animals, even, even dinosaurs, have gone extinct in, in very recent years. And it's, and it's because that it's not always the largest and strongest that survives. It is, it is the most keen to adapting to their environment as the principles of natural selection tell us. Well, anyway, um, that's all. I'm getting a Skype call. <laughs> Convenient timing. Make sure you do your chapter review, numbers 9 through 16, apply numbers 1 through 3. I'll see you guys later.